Uh, we'll be moving into our public hearing. Item number three, our uh, 2015 Urban Water Management Plan presented by Diana Langley, our Public Works Director. Diana. Good evening. I have before you tonight the 2015 Urban Water Management Plan. Background is the uh, California Water Code requires urban water suppliers to prepare and adopt urban water management plans. The urban water management plans must satisfy the requirements of the Urban Water Management Planning Act of 1983. So the purpose of the plan is to maintain efficient use of urban water supplies, promote conservation programs and policies, ensure sufficient water supplies are available for future beneficial use, provide a mechanism for response during a drought, which is con considered our water shortage contingency plan, and establish and identify progress made toward complying with the Water Conservation Bill of 2009, better known as the 20% 20 by 2020. The content of the plan includes the system description, system water use, the Water Conservation Bill of 2009 baselines and targets, system supplies, water supply reliability, water shortage contingency planning, and demand management measures. So the three items I'm gonna specifically talk about tonight are the Water Conservation Bill of 2009 compliance, water supply reliability, and the water shortage contingency plan. So for the 2009 compliance, they look at the baseline usage for 2001 through 2002, which for Yuba City is 240 gallons per capita per day. When determining the 2020 target, they basically take 80% of that baseline usage to come up with a target of 192 gallons per capita per day. The city's actual 2015 usage was 163 gallons per capita per day, and the average usage from 2011 to 2015 is 198 gallons per capita per day. So what that tells us is that we are on track for meeting the 20% by 2020. Um, what's helped us with that is the conservation measures that have been put into place, particularly more so over the last couple of years. Uh, but the finding is that significant additional conservation measures should not be required to meet that 2020 target. For the water supply reliability, you look at the normal year supply, which is considered an average year, the single dry year, and then the multiple dry year. Under the normal year supply and demand comparison, the city um, the city supply totals are shown in the the second row. The demand totals, which would be the water consumption, are shown, and then the difference is shown at the bottom row. So the city has sufficient water supplies, assuming we're able to draw 100% of our contracts through uh, at least 2035. And 2040 is where you start to see that um, we would need additional water supplies. I would like to note that this demand is based upon 3% annual growth, which is very aggressive. Under the single dry year supply and demand comparison, um, the demand totals, again, are based upon full demand. It doesn't take into account any implementation of conservation measures, so it doesn't assume implementation of your water shortage contingency plan. So under the single dry year, you would we would be lacking sufficient water for all of the scenarios shown. But as we know through this last drought with the implementation of the water shortage contingency plan, we were able to achieve significant conservation. Under the multiple dry year supply and demand comparison, under the first year, we would have um, negative supplies in 2035 and 2040. Again, the demands are based upon full demands and, and are not adjusted to account for conservation measures that have been put in place. Under the second year, we would need additional supplies in 2040. And under the third year, we would need additional supplies in all five scenarios. I think what's important is that through this latest drought, we have actual numbers that we're able to use when determining the single dry year and the multiple, multiple dry year because we actually experienced that. So all scenarios show the need for the city to secure additional water supplies and maximize existing water contracts. Options to improve the reliability and sustainability of the city's water supply include continuing to implement long-term conservation measures to reduce overall per capita usage. One of the tools for that is the implementation of the Model Water Efficiency Landscape Ordinance. 
So all new development within the city will be required to comply with this ordinance, which would reduce uh, water consumption associated with irrigation, which is a large portion of the demand in the summertime. Secure additional water contracts for the Feather River and implement the aquifer storage recovery project to maximize winter contracts for use during the summer months. So under that project, you would draw the max under your winter contracts, supply the water or store the water in a groundwater aquifer, and then draw it during the summer months to use. The third element I wanna to touch on is the water shortage contingency planning. The Urban Water Management Plan must include a water shortage contingency analysis that addresses stages of action to be undertaken in response to water supply shortages. This, With this uh, Urban Water Management Plan, we reached out to the Regional Water Authority to utilize the template that they recommend for agencies within the authority so that we're consistent. So under this, we're recommending a four-stage plan that with the percent supply reduction ranging from 20% to 50%, and then have common nomenclature so that when the region talks about a water crisis that we all have the same understanding of what that means. So with that, the recommendation is to conduct a public hearing and receive and file the draft 2015 Urban Water Management Plan. With that, I'd be happy to answer questions. Any questions of Diana prior to opening this to the public? Through the mayor. A couple questions, Diana. You said that the, um, the, um, plans for the amount of water were based on average growth of growth of three percent per year yes what has been our average growth for the last 10 years or another if you have a some type of an average what we have actually experienced well if you if you disregard the annexations if you look at true development the growth has been very minimal on an annual basis i don't have the exact percentage but it's if you look at the population growth over the last 10 years, the majority of it's been associated with annexations. Now that does count towards our water demand because many of those um, residents are already, you know, water customers. Um, so the actual growth related to new development is pretty minimal over the last 10 years. And the 3% the is based upon um, census data as well as recommendations from the uh, Department of Finance, and then also the uh, what what SACOG looks long term within the region. So those at three percent, it's really a worst case scenario. Three percent is very aggressive in terms of population projections. And then uh, one more question concerning the aquifer storage program: um, What percentage of water will we be able to store in that, or do we have those figures yet to know? You talk about we will need new water sources. Will that be enough, or are we still going to need additional sources beyond that? Typically, what I've seen other agencies store through their aquifer storage recovery program is ranging from 2,000 to 4,000 acre feet. And so, um, you know, based upon the winter supplies that we have, you know, that would accommodate, we'd be able to accommodate that volume. Um, and so once you get, I haven't seen agencies do much larger than 4,000 acre feet. All right. Thank you. Any other questions before opening? Yeah, through the mayor, I just sure. have a quick, quick question for you and just kind of picking back what council member Duke said, obviously we've been in a drought over the last few years and now we're coming out of a drought. So let's just say hypothetically next year or, or this year in the winter time, we have another great rainstorm. So we got plenty of water. So how do we, how do we, I guess the point is, and we won't know until we get to a later meeting on the rates and stuff. And I guess my point is, how do you ask people to conserve if there's not a you know, water shortage? Mm -hmm. So how do we meet our goal by 2020 if there's plenty of water coming in? Because now we've reduced everybody's water uh, supply and we've complied with the, uh, um, you know, water reduction from 30 to 20 percent, I guess, or whatever it was, we had to go to a certain percentage amount. So how do we how do we balance that if there's no drought and we have plenty of water? Right. Um, that's a great question. So part of that is going to rely on that model water efficiency landscape ordinance that applies to new development, where it restricts the the amount of water that they can apply to landscaping. The another element of it is encouraging 
um, the long-term measures in terms of retrofitting, um, you know, existing high volume toilets, washing machines, focusing on those types of, of fixtures where you can reduce those to low volume. Um, you know, the key is really the summer usage. That's where you're going to gain the most in terms of reducing your overall per capita usage. And I think that with this latest drought, uh, people have realized that they don't need to water their yards as often as they used to. And so that will result in long-term behavioral changes to how they utilize water. Great, thank you. Any other questions? All right, I'm gonna open this to the public. This is a public hearing on this item. Any member of the public wishing to speak to this item may at this time. Seeing none, I'm gonna close the public hearing, bring it back to the council for action. To the mayor, I'll go ahead and make a motion uh, to approve staff's recommendation for A and B. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you very much. Passed unanimously.